giving off art teacher vibes today with these gorgeous brushes. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Sloan series. Today we are talking about Smashbox Cosmetics. This is my first time using Smashbox Cosmetics. So I'm gonna do a full face, full eyes, everything. There are also a couple products that I'm featuring today that are really out of my realm, the type of products that I would have never picked out for myself, which is a really fun challenge. I am going to be priming my face with priming water, something I never thought I would say before. This is very cool. This is a set and refresh spray. I always set my makeup with some sort of setting spray, setting mist, hydrating mist. I feel like it's that final step that really makes me feel fresh and ready for the day. So I, I am really excited to see what it, it does for my makeup to start with a setting spray or priming spray. Let's see. Oh, it feels really good. It's nice and hydrated and shiny now, which I like. I'm going to let that sit in for a second. I'm still going to use a traditional primer since Smashbox is really known for theirs. I don't like spraying my face with something where I'm like, woo, did I just put perfume on? It just feels really truly like water. The cool thing about the Smooth and Blur is that it's oil free. Now for someone like me with dry skin, I'm definitely not afraid to use oils, but for people who are always asking, what can I use that's oil free? This is a really good option for you. I always have red skin. I'm always battling red skin. So I love that this is a green based primer, the redness reducer. Ooh, look at that. It's like a really nice mousse based texture. That is not what I was expecting. <gasps> That's really nice. I'm gonna go with the redness reducing. That feels really good on my skin. Wow. Ooh, this one feels nice too. Maybe I'll have to do a bit of a combo. Okay, use around my T-zone the blurring primer and the redness reducer everywhere else. And my face is still a little bit wet from the water, but I wanna keep a bit of that moisture and that's why I'm putting the primer over it. Oh, whoa! Oh my God, my skin. My skin feels so soft. They gotta invent some sort of like touch of vision so you guys can feel this. <gasps> wow. I would wear this primer on a no makeup day too, just to help even out my skin tone. I'm so impressed. I have to be honest, I don't always wear primer. I've just heard so many different makeup artists be like, if your skin's well moisturized, it's not something you need. So if I do choose a primer, it has to have an effect. I'm not just gonna use primer to use primer just to add another step to my routine. If I'm gonna use a primer, it's gonna have something like a smoothing effect, a redness reducing effect. So I really enjoy these products. I just was not expecting for my skin to feel this smooth. Before I do any foundation, I am going to go in with their under eye brightener. I love an under eye brightener. Da, da, da. Oh my gosh, my hands are so slippery from the primer, I can't open it. Oh, wow, cute. I thought it was gonna be a doe foot, but it's almost like a um, nail polish applicator. I have teeth marks on it now, great. I have one, I get one new nice thing and I ruin it. Okay, I'm gonna go under my eyes. This doesn't really have pigment in it. It really just has a brightening effect, which is really good too because you can use it over makeup. I'm gonna put it on my chin too. Any place that I would use highlight, I'm gonna put this product. When they say under eye brightener, what I take from that is something that's going to cancel out any sort of dullness and add some brightening and not make my skin appear to be asleep. So I'm gonna put a little bit on my forehead too any of the areas that I would highlight. Oh, let's put a little under my brow. Well, I'm really going uh, overboard. Ooh, really 
nice, very natural. This definitely isn't a concealer. So if you're looking for a product that's going to cover your under eye bags, this isn't the product that's going to do that. This is the product that's going to help make your under eyes look bright, natural, like you've gotten eight hours of sleep, even if you haven't, but you still aren't wearing any makeup. So for my girls who hate when they get creasy under eyes and when it looks like they're wearing makeup, this is the product for you. Oh, that gave a really nice effect to the skin. Wow. Really, really beautiful. Okay, now I'm going to go in with my foundation. The foundation I'm using today is a powder-based foundation. I always choose a liquid foundation, but I was thinking about this the other day, how I always use powder to help conceal, blend out, blur the effects of larger pores. Why not start with a powder to help do that from the beginning, right? You know when you were in elementary school and you would get those gushy things that you put over your pencils to make them easier to hold? They have indents like that. And it's such a fun, familiar feeling. I'll start with a little bit of powder. This is really funny. I don't know why this feels so foreign. I always feel like I'm doing concealer, foundation, setting powder, and then powder over it. But it's nice to just have like an easy makeup routine. And just pick a colored foundation powder. Why did we stop using these? When did makeup get so complicated? The other thing that I'm noticing is how unbelievably natural this foundation looks. I also like that I don't have to worry about setting it or using concealer. It's kind of an all-in-one. It's just blending really, really beautifully. Wow, powder foundation. The unsung hero of the makeup community. It was just waiting in the background all of these years. Like, you've forgotten about me, and when you remember, I'll be here. I'm not going to hold anything against you. I know. I know what I'm good for. It's very layerable too, because in the areas where I don't need a lot, I'm just kind of letting my skin be. Right now I have some more pigmentation on my forehead, so I'm really concentrating the product there. I like too how unmessy this container is. And I'm gonna take that concentration of the product on a smaller brush for the areas that I need more of it. Around my nose, any old acne marks, and then I can leave the rest of my skin to be. This is the easiest way to get a beautiful complexion. Who knew? Why didn't anyone tell me? All of this time, I've been using a million products. Could just use one powder foundation. I'm wondering what it would look like if I did a bit of the under eye brightener over the foundation. Let's see. I'm just gonna tap it in with my finger. It adds a much higher intensity to put a cream over a powder. If you're looking to give more impact to this product, this is how I would apply it. So the first way I did it really gave a no makeup look to it, and the second way gave me much more of a glow. We have this beautiful contour palette from Smashbox. Really, really nice cool tone shades to it. That's what drew me to it in the first place. We also have some highlights in it and a bit of a darker blush tone. I'm gonna use the contour shades to just add a bit of dimension to my face. Also go in with this Smashbox dome-shaped brush. Wow. All these products are giving me the most natural complexion. I'm gonna mix together these two shades to go over my forehead. I use the darker shade around my cheekbones, but the nice thing about having a palette is you can mix. You're not committed to one shade, which definitely looks more natural because in your everyday complexion, the way that skin would naturally go with any sort of shadows is there would be a lot of dimension. It's not just one color. So keep that in mind anytime you're using a bronzer, anytime you're contouring, 
really shouldn't be one shade. I always like to go around my hairline. I'm gonna take a bit of this highlight shade and mix it with the blush shade for my cheeks. Wow, this is giving me a really nice like California tan. I put blush to tie my look together, the tops of my temples as well. I want to add a bit more brightness to my under eyes and I have this smaller step-by-step -step contour guide from Smashbox. I'm just going to go in with the lightest shade and pat down the product. I really feel like that helped tie the whole look together. I'm very glad I did it. I'm going over my eyelids as well. Eyes, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and jellymen. That's how I used to walk into the room when I was a little girl. I would go, ladies and jellymen. LA cover shot. Mmm. 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 I just did something that reminded me so much of my friend Eileen. She used to always do that. She'd be like, mmm. Mmm. Very, very nice. Lots of neutrals, lots of shimmers, lots of very bright mattes. Look at these, like, super. <coughs> High pigmented, bright, bright colored mattes. Okay, I am, like, art teacher central right now. I am going to stick with this California Glow look and use these really beautiful shimmer shades. What am I going to do with these dirty fingers now? Just live like this? All right. Really nice magnetic closing palette box. In the center, there was this little surprise for me. Not just for me, for anyone. And I was like, oh, wow. Uh, a brush? No! An eyeliner! A beautiful black eyeliner. What? Oh, that was very helpful. The shade names are written on the back, and I will leave them below in the description of this video, depending on which ones I'm using. I just feel like it's less helpful if I say it out loud, and better if I write it in the description. I'm going to, I dropped everything. I am going to go in with this nice tan shade. Give myself a bit of dimension. Pretty, pretty. I want you guys to know, though, when I say I'm pretty, not that you can't call yourself pretty, but when I'm like pretty, pretty over my makeup, I'm genuinely commenting on the pigmentation. It's like I'm complimenting the chemist who made it. I'm like, yes, ma'am. <sighs> sometimes I hate eyeshadow. Sometimes I love it because it makes my eyes look bigger. I don't know. It's like the way you can feel about some people. You're like, sometimes I love you. Sometimes I can't stand you. Now I'm going to take a bit of this rose gold shade over the center of my eye. I don't know if it's my imagination, but I feel like because I used to mostly powder products today. I'm not dealing with the same level of fallout. Oh, can I say something I've been wanting to say for a long time? Do not blow on your brushes before you use them. When I see people doing their makeup and blowing on their eyeshadow brushes, and all I can think about is the bacteria they're about to put onto their face. It drives me nuts. But okay, this rose gold color is beautiful. Like, are you guys kidding me? First of all, my father won't even eat birthday cake because people blow on it. Do not blow on your makeup brushes. My eyebrows look really good today. I have an eyebrow tutorial. I'll leave it. I'll drop it. I'm feeling so kooky. I think it's because I'm really pressed for time. So I'm like trying to get it all out. I'm taking a super bright shade to the inner corners. Oh, that's so pretty. <gasps> you guys. I don't know why I just thought of this. 
but I'm trying on wedding dresses this weekend. I feel like this is the same makeup I should wear for that. If anyone has any tips, too, of where I should look for a wedding dress, let me know. Would you guys be interested in um, seeing my wedding experience? <laughs> I'm putting a bit more glitter on because I love it. I love it so much. These colors are gorgeous. And I think I want to put a bit of the very, very gold shade. All right, why not? Why not swatch them all? Dirty myself up. Adding just a bit of gold for that pop of accent. What I like is that these shimmer colors are staying exactly where I put them. So I still have the control of getting the exact look that I want. I'm kind of creating a bit of a sunset eye. I feel like sometimes you put shimmer on and you're like, where did it go? Just did exactly whatever it wanted. So that's really nice. I'm going to take the eyeliner that came with it and just tight line right under my eyes. Very creamy. This is my favorite trick. I do this all the time. I don't always wear eyeliner, but I always tight line. Mascara. Super fan. I love the red, by the way. Maybe it's because red is one of my colors, and I like holding a bunch of things of the same color in my hand. Really nice brush for separation. Let's see if I can get some good volume. The first thing I notice is how shiny my lashes are looking. By the way, if you guys have seen my videos before, you know I cannot put on mascara without getting it all over my lids, so forgive me. I just take it off after it dries with a clean Q-tip. But it will always happen. It's my cross to bear. Wow. Zero clumps. Lots of length. So this is the eye with the mascara, without. Putting it on my lower lashes too because of the separation that it's giving, I think looks really nice. Volumizing mascara, I have trouble with my lower lashes. I think it can look like a lot. Ooh, it's like big baby doll lashes. There are two colors I want to put onto my lips. Really pretty pink. The second one I can't not do, especially with the gold eye I have going on. This looks to me to be more like a lip topper. Wow, look at that gold. So, so pretty. All right, let's do them both. It's a nice thing about lip glosses. You can always layer them, especially since the bottom one, the pink one, has more pigment in it. Hmm, not sticky. I'm always impressed with a lip gloss that can hold its weight and color. I'm going to put the gold over it to tie together the whole look. And it always helps to have a bit shimmer in the center of your lips to make them look really wide. It's so funny, like everything else, we're like, make it look smaller. And then your lips, you're like, make them look bigger. I think just having a color like this to bring together the whole look really completed everything. This full face was done with Smashbox Cosmetics. I'm so happy with the final look. My face looks very natural, very touchable. I would never normally touch my face after I finish my makeup. But using powder products, and they sell much more than powder products, but I really wanted to stretch my imagination and try something new for me. I love playing with makeup. I'll always try new things. I'll always explore. But I just think this gave my face such a natural, beautiful, fresh summertime look. So happy with it. Let me know if you guys want to see more first impression videos focusing on a specific brand. Leave a comment below on what brand you would like to see focused on in the next The Sloan Series video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next Wednesday on The Sloan Series. I'm Sloan Glass. Make sure that you're following us on Instagram so you can say hi, check in, blow a kiss, throw a wave, you know.